Welcome to the Digital Forester podcast, where we talk to foresters about how they are using digital technologies in their day-to-day forestry work. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Digital Forester podcast. Today, I am joined by Johan Eckenstead, the founder of Arborio. How are you, Johan? I'm fine. Thanks. Nice to be here on the podcast. Yeah, great to have you. Great to have you on. I was just commenting earlier for our listeners. What a cool background. I, I thought it was a virtual background at first, but Johan said, no, this is my this is my treehouse. And I'm like, that's the coolest treehouse I've seen. But Swedish design, love it. Always loved it. So uh, obviously you're like us, you know, tail end, sum, tail end of summer is coming. You had a good summer. Yeah, it's a really good summer. It was uh, hot and nice weather this summer. So it's been a lot of outdoors. This, Absolutely. Uh, Awesome. Awesome. Well, well, for those listeners who are watching this, um, you can see that Johan's uh, like me, a tech geek. He's got his microphone with his filter all set up. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're rolling in the big leagues now. We've got our, our, our custom setups here. So we're going to jump into it. I'm excited about this podcast. I have never met Johan. I think there is a connection though. I saw there is uh, Umio. There is a connection there. I, I, I've been up to Umeå, uh, there was a Silva Laser Conference, a LiDAR conference back in the early 2000s. So I remember going up to Umeå in, in northern Sweden, just loving it. A uh, beautiful place. But maybe to kick things off, uh, Johan, tell us your forestry background. How did you become a forester? Yeah, it was not my intention in the first days. I, my intention was to do a PhD study uh, like 12, 12 years ago when when I was waiting for the, the grants, the fundings for the PhD, it was like I, I searched for a work in the forestry sector and I got it and I started working and I really enjoyed it. It was like, it felt like this is the place to be. It was a forward leading industry like sort of happening. Everything was happening. It was the fall to action. And uh, after we got the grant, it was like, oh, I don't want to go back to the university anymore. I want to be in, in this kind of forestry reality sector so i've been here for like oh 12 13 years now wow wow so so was there a connection to forestry you know a parent that was a forester or friends or is this really just uh you know going to school initially then getting your your landing on the ground with your your work boots on and getting right into it it's in in some kind of way i mean if we look backwards in my in my uh, ancestry it was like uh, my we have my my relatives have worked in the forestry and in forests and in the in the sawmills and, and, and in the furniture, wood furniture business and so on. So it's never been far away. So it felt like it felt like not pretty normal to get back into it. Right, right. Absolutely. And I can see wood timber beams on your, your treehouse ceiling there. So it's always, always present there. Uh, so, so thinking of, tell me about the university. I, we, there's Umeå University, your work career. I am not going to try and pronounce it. I've learned one thing with the Swedish language. This guy just can't do it. But, but you had about uh, eight years and five months with no, I'm not going to try. Swedskog is. Swedskog, yeah, Swedskog. Yeah, not even the, close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the the largest forest uh, company in Sweden. Uh, that I first started working in, in the environmental part, the uh, nature conservation part, and, and went more and more over to the technical sides, and and ended up as a technical specialist uh, working with remote sensing and 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 uh, mobile technology. Wow. Wow. And, and so that um, mobile technology and remote sensing again, how much did that cut? Like, were you a programmer in your younger days or is this just stuff you picked up through time being, being a, a digital yeah, it's, forester? Been, it's, been, it's always been so, some sort of pro- programming. I think when I was young, I went in high school, I did some hobby programming and so on. And, but I never been really deep into it. It must be like maybe last five, six years that I, Work first with Python and now now mainly in Swift iOS development that I really appreciate the the tooling nowadays. If you compare how it is today and like twenty years ago, the tooling is incredible and the, and just searching on the internet and getting knowledge and learn each other and, and get up. Uh, it's such a difference be, between when you started out l- l- learning by books and trying to do it yourself. So yeah. big change. Yeah, absolutely. I still remember to my early computer science days where, uh, you know, a lot of text terminals and not these fancy predictive things. And even today with so much low code or no code, 
uh, tools out there. It is quite a quite amazing uh, there. So uh, thinking of Arborio, uh, you know, it's a company uh, that 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 you founded. The entrepreneur side to launch a company is not an easy thing. Not a lot of people do it. I I know a lot of people look at entrepreneurship and it's it's this shiny star and it's so easy. Everybody does it and you know retire on your sixty foot yacht. But most of us who are in the trenches day in day out know that that. Um, there's the highs, there's the lows, there's the roller coaster ride in between. But from an entrepreneurship, maybe tell 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 us how where the thought came from, um, how it started, and and you know, did you participate in different incubators or accelerators, or maybe tell us how Arborio came to be? Yeah, it was it started mainly because I was uh, seven years ago when I the drones, the UAVs, was emerging and and coming to the forestry sector. It was really interesting and seeing that you could fly over a forest and take a lot of pictures and stitch them together and get the auto mosaic and the point cloud and so on and I felt oh this is really really cool and then I thought why not you use the same technology by by ground that going out with your phone and take some pictures and stitch them together and get this point cloud and I I did that and I it took like one day to to man to fix all things and it uh, it took a very long time and then it was really sparse bad boy point cloud uh, but you felt okay it's possible but it's, i couldn't tell tell a colleague or some friends in the forestry that you should do like this but then three four years ago when the ar technology emerged i saw that here they are creating a point cloud on the fly why not use that point cloud and go out the measure in that point cloud in real time in 60 frames per second so that was the like, the starting point and then it tried out and the first we, we made an app that was a height meter that you just measure the height of a tree and you know we are measuring a lot of heights in the forest so it was a common problem that I wanted to solve and it, the thing the nice thing was that we, we combined a, an old old way of use you doing it where you know you go out and you put the taper on the and the, on the trunk on the tree and you go back and get a measurement and take some inclinations and you get the height but you could do that in the phone by the ar technology so so we re- released this first app and it's been very nicely uh, many people have enjoyed it and appreciated the, the feature to be able to always have have the height meter in your pocket yeah, so so maybe let me jump in here and let's let's back things up because I think there's probably yeah. a lot of our listeners listening and going, okay, I, there's there's some terms here Johan's using that I'm not familiar with. So let's start with AR. What is yeah. AR? Why 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 is it important to a forester? Yes, this I mean, it's, AR is augmented reality, and it's it's a. Uh, I mean, you want to put uh, some digital uh, objects on uh, on the reality. That's in the main. The, this uh, Pokemon that was uh, popular a few years ago, where you could throw balls on on uh, digital monsters on, in your backyard, it was uh, AR, and so it was the, this merge of the reality and this digital reality. And in, in in to do that, the the tool, the phone needs to get uh, locality data from its surroundings and make a 3D map of everything in order to place this digital content on the on the phone. And uh, that, that was the technology that was, it was not, not meant for tech forestry, it was meant for enjoyment games and so on. And, and it's, it's something that will be larger and larger. You know, the big Tim Cook of Apple, he says that the next big thing will be this AR and maybe this AR glasses when that will come in a few years. And, that will be a really interesting time to see what, what what possibilities that technology will give us. Yeah, yeah. So what what you're saying is I I should have been paying more attention to my kids when they were playing Pokemon Go and Pikachu was jumping out from left, right, center, who knows uh, on the phone. I should have been paying more attention because maybe uh, there's ties to force you. That that's definitely interesting for sure. So thinking of you mentioned um, you know using uh, augmented reality. Um, uh, LIDAR technology, uh, there's been previous speakers on this podcast that have talked about terrestrial LIDAR, uh, even handheld LIDAR. This is something different, like the iPhone, 
that you're using. Uh, the 12 has a built-in LiDAR sensor. Uh, maybe for our listeners who, who, who uh, may not be aware of that, because whenever a forester hears LiDAR, they think helicopter or airplane uh, per se, but maybe bring our listeners up to speed. But what's, what's in this iPhone 12? It's, it's you know, obviously not long-ranging LiDAR. Um, it's eye safe LIDAR, but what you mentioned point density, uh, maybe refresh our listeners. Yeah. What does it actually mean? Yeah. It's uh, I mean, it's a, it's a LIDAR that sends uh, emits uh, 50,000 pulses each, uh, each time and it's 60 times a second. So it's uh, a lot of data collection it makes every time. And, and I mean, it's, it's not a long range LIDAR. It's, it, it's a range of five meters. It could get a little bit farther, but the, the, the good quality is, is below five meters. And the, it's using a technology that's called V-cell. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it really, but the idea is there. It, it's it's a very efficient way to to send emit uh, laser points, but it's also sensitive to noise. And the interesting part there is that the software algorithm is really good to to filter out the noise. So every time it comes regular update. So it's even though that this lidar sensor is like one year old now. It's still is getting better at the software updates. That's a really cool technology. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, 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 obviously, I, I know a little, just a wee bit of, uh, about lidar. So, uh, guiding our listeners. So, really, with the work with Arborio, uh, you know, there's some folks I've seen on Twitter, you know, on social media, they're taking the iPhone or the iPad Pro and then going out and then walking, creating scans. R- really, is it a, a safe way to describe the Arborio products as? We're, we're looking to replace the vertex hypsometer. We're looking to replace the calipers. And if that's true, how has the market, the forestry market responded to the arboreal apps? Because I believe there's two. There's the four, there's the tree height one yeah. you mentioned. Yeah. And then there's the forest force. Yeah, yeah, true. Yes, the, I mean, we, we call the, the, the arboreal forest a digital caliper. It, uh, you, make, uh, you make sample plots, and in the sample plot, you measure each tree, the diameter, and the measure the heights. And then you have this basal areas, and I mean, you know, the, the whole, whole shebang that you're used to collecting when you're out in the field. And, and the, the LiDAR is a really game changer for us because it makes it possible to remove the, the personal influence of the result because then you could let the LiDAR take the, these measurements and measure the, the trees. And I've seen some, some scientific papers about this LiDAR. It was some release a few weeks ago when they tried to scan, just walk around and scan and let take in, take in the point cloud, let, let everything, let, let the computer resolve everything. But it's... It's a bit tricky to always succeed to let let the computer or the processor do the old thing. So in our cases, you need to go to each tree and measure it. And we have some automatic measurements, so you don't need to press the button. It's, it detects the tree and measures it and so on. And, and in Sweden, we also could detect the tree species. In, we are very lucky that we don't have so many different species and the, <laughs> it's easy to distinguish the bark from these different species. But in in Canada, you have a lot of different, uh, uh, oh, so it's not yeah. a problem there. Yeah, I remember when I was in Sweden, uh, you, you guys would say, oh, like species identification so easy. And I remember scratching my head thinking, what? I'm missing something. And then to your yeah. point, the, the total number of species at play is much, much smaller than yeah. the ones we have in Canada. But that's, so, that's still cool, right? So what you're saying is if I've got an iPhone 12, um, I can go to a plot, I can go into the bush, boots on the ground, I can then start going through and then just measuring all my trees, I'll get diameter off the arboreal app, I could also measure the tree height and then based on the, the picture what it's seen, it'll automatically tell me what species it is or is it a keyed in species? It's, uh, it's in Sweden, you have, have the, the in Sweden, Finland, Norway, you'll have the correct species, but in Canada you will, you will need to enter it, you need to choose your on your list. Gotcha. But we are, we are we have a feature in that that we are collect every tree if the user give us permission to collect data we take a picture of each tree he measures so we get a, a, an image collection so if you have uh, if you have many users and they let us use their pictures we could train a model for new countries also so in yeah. the future maybe we'll have the possibilities in more countries so it depends on the user yeah, so it's a, like a crowdsourcing. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I love the idea. If you can get people to crowdsource imagery and then we're into that machine learning, deep learning space where we can train a model to, to recognize that uh, always, always easier said than done. You know, Canada, yeah. we have winter just as you do. Well, I guess similarly uh, to, to Sweden there. I, I have good friends in Stockholm. And so I visited them. I, I love Sweden, love going back there. Uh, so, so thinking of that, the burning question, I know a listener hearing Johan, you speak, describe this app guaranteed. They're going to say, okay, but how accurate and precise it is. And I believe on social media, I had a post recently. And again, I should know how to pronounce this, but I don't, but, uh, but Scogs Ford did an assessment. Uh, and then this is where you're going to say it. And I'll be yeah, like, uh, yeah, I totally uh, got it wrong uh, again, but tell us about that independent accuracy uh, assessment of arboreal forest. Yeah. And tree height. Also, they are school that did uh, an, uh, an evaluation of the app and, they did use the LIDAR and they used a method that they walk along a line, uh, a transect and measured all the trees within uh, in four meters by the transect. Uh, and we think that is the best way to, to get an accurate area estimate because you don't, you don't turn around, you don't, it's easier for a user to walk along a line instead of walking in a circle. It's, it's not, it's not a natural way. And, but the, the result was very good and the bias was incredible low it was like below one millimeter in bias on the di diameter and that's uh, that's uh, that, was, that was astonishing for me to see that it could be so good result and but you should also know that it depends on the bark structure on the trees the diameter if you have a very um, uneven bark structure with a lot of fragments on the bark you have larger problems and it, it is because of that it's a visual measurement it's not an when you have a, a manual caliper, you could press it, the calipers in uh, in different ways. But it was uh, it it felt very good to see this evaluation because it, it proved that we was on the right way with our yeah. product. Yeah. So thinking of uh, connecting the dots. So let's say you know we're we're measuring uh, DBH for trees, and let's say um, on average we're seeing about. Uh, 20 centimeter dbh trees from a precision point of view what what would you tell our listeners they can expect it's 20 centimeters plus or minus what that that yeah um, yeah the, yeah the mean absolute error was about four percent so if it's you should never say this in in when you're on live but <laughs> but <laughs> if you say 20 centimeters one percent is uh, two millimeter so, so your you should the mean error should be like uh, one centimeter, but then you always have some 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 measurement will be two centimeters off, but uh, it's uncommon. And so, if you have a wider wider diameter, but the largest problem we see right now is the ovality of the tree. That's the big, especially on this large tree. That's our really oval, and it's no it's no it's no. It's no coincidence that the forester do this cross caliper measurements. They measure a tree from both sides if they want to have a really accurate assessment right. of the diameter. But if right. you measure a lot of tree, I mean the 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 error is always going to the to the mean. Yeah, yeah, it'll converge for sure. So really, with the arboreal forest app doing the DBH, you you correct me if I'm wrong. So it's not really it's not scanning the actual tree trunk with the lidar. It's using its position in augmented reality space and AR space to infer what that that diameter is. Is that is that accurate? It, it, it's a combination. It uses the LIDAR to measure the diameter. Okay. Uh, and in order to, to measure the area, it uses this AR technology because you need to know if you're inside the plot or outside the plot. Right. So, so it's a combination and, uh, but we still have, some, we still have some more information that we could use from the LiDAR. It feels like we are, we are scratching the surface and, and we, we have some, some features that we look into. So maybe we could get a little, little lower error in the, in the short future. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so thinking of, of other people I've talked to work in the field, they're probably thinking, okay, Johan, this sounds great. How many iPhones do I have to take with me? I'm on a 10 hour shift. I'm assuming this is battery intensive. And so walk me through, I, I got a, let's say, let's be, let's be kind. I, I'm i I'm a lazy forester. I'm saying this uh, in jest or joking. I'm on an eight hour shift. Who works an eight hour shift? You got to drive out to the woods. Uh, you got to get set up. But let's just say for argument's sake, I've got eight hours of cruising. 
uh, menstruation work I'm doing, will my iPhone 12 last me the whole day or am I bringing in a, a backup power or am I buying five iPhones to get me through that uh, shift? Uh, we did, when, when they did the evaluation, uh, we, 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 did, we didn't know, we wanted to see how, how, will, it, how will it go. And then uh, we brought with us a, a power bank, uh, and, uh, we, but we never used it. But uh, I think okay. if you're, uh, of course, if you will work eight hours, no, no break, no, no, then it will be a problem. But it wasn't, I think there is no problem to four or five hours of use, uh, but uh, who knows? But uh, that's something so the taking in consideration that you may need the power bank if you're really hard user. Yeah, yeah. So, so what about sunlight and temperature? Again, you can sense that yeah. I've had these discussions uh, with other yeah. foresters because they're the ones they always ask, right? It's like, oh, it's really bright. Johan, is my iPhone going to overheat yeah. or it's cold out or it's too hot out? Uh, what, what yeah. is it going to work? It's uh, if, you, if you take the sunlight, if, if you, it's hard to measure in in, if you get the sunlight into the sensor, it's no, you can't measure. You need to. So if they have the sun directly into the, the sensor, you need to move. Uh, but that's not a problem in the forest. It's not so. It's not so common problem. Uh, the heat we don't haven't experienced, and the cold. It's mo mostly a user experience that uh, you, it's it's hard to. If you're really cold, I mean, it's like minus twenty degrees. It's not nice to put your fingers on a on a, on a phone screen. That's you know that's the big biggest problem. So and the the yeah that's the so so it's I think if you know how to use mobile limitations on mobile phones, that's the same for us. It's right. the really right. cool. It's not not nice to touch the screen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely for sure. So so also thinking of um, some of these questions, I, I already know the answers to, but I know. I'm representing the listeners when we're thinking about height measurements. I know you've posted on this, but slope, does it uh, matter? No, and, and we, had, we had a few people have asked about this, could we measure in the slopes? And, and I mean, we did, when we did the algorithms, it's, it's basic algorithms that you, you, you take two triangles and, and measure the distance and so on. Uh, but uh, I was forced to go out and, and test it and prove it <laughs> on a video because <laughs> it felt like there's no other way to show it because if you just tell one you, they don't believe you, you need to show give them image proof. Yeah, yeah. With parks and slopes. Yeah. Yeah, I laughed at that one because you're like, all right, I'm perpendicular now i'm parallel and the numbers are yeah. yep it's the same it's the same and you're actually right we're we're trigonometry right and 101 pretty basic math yeah. uh, that we're doing and if you use you've used a vertex or you know a laser range finder it's it's the same concepts yeah. there like measure yeah. parallel to the slope avoid you know being down slope yeah. from it. but but again i had to ask just to make sure i knew you had thought about it i'm sure other forces have asked but it literally works on your iphone so yeah. it's a but but it's 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 a pro. I mean, it's a problem to measure in slopes because it's harder to see the the, the base of the tree, and it's, it's so it's more tricky. But it's it's so for everyone. Right, right, and it and it's doable. It's solvable for sure. Absolutely. Um. So so thinking of 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 your applications, has and 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 I believe I saw you you got it certified with the U.S. Army, the GON. So that that's a big news because often with defense organizations it doesn't really matter which country um, they have to be pre-certified before they're able to to be used maybe tell us about the journey on that was that a walk in the park it was really easy or or, or how did that that process that certification process come about and yeah. and what has it uh, done for arborio from a business revenue point of view yeah that was uh, it was a uh, felt unrealistic that they contacted us the u.s the u.s army contacted us and wanted to use the 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 height meter and it was like what are they going to use it for it it couldn't just be trees it must be something else <laughs> but, so it was uh, they, it was really they they you needed to submit the the their code to them so they could review all, all everything the so source it, code the, the yeah, source wow. code. And, it, and so it felt like oh should i really do this but uh, then it felt okay i why not? 
so, so it was, and we need to take away every, we need to take over in, in use in normal cases, you have some network traffic from the app and you, you have some data you collect to send to the cloud and, and you could, so, but every, everything like that was forced to remove because that was a security risk. Yeah. So, but it's from, from after that, it was really, really cool because it was nice to be a part of the military. So yeah. Part, um, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So, so, so curious, I, I'm going to ask the burning question because I know I can already hear a few people I know very well in the forestry community already on my shoulder, probably chirping away, but Johan, I hate iPhones. I'm an yeah. Android. I'm an Android guy. How do I use our boreal forest and our boreal tree height with an Android phone? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, you got something for me. Yeah. The good news: the, the height meter we have the Android, but on Android you have the height meter. Uh, so, so, so that and that we released that released the height meter for iOS first, and then we released for the Android. And and I mean, as you say, there it's a it's a common device to have an Android in in the forestry uh, and. Uh, so, but it's also hard for like a small company to 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 work on on everything, and you need to focus on on one one type of, of equipment first before you could try to make it for everyone. And there are some interesting parts on Android right now. The there is the, the problem with Android is that they release uh, some sort of sensor and they they take it away. It was, a, the, it was also the Samsung S20, they had some top time of, time of light sensor. And now in uh, S21, they don't have it. So it's a little bit risky to jump on that. Uh, but but now they have some interesting sensor on this Sony. I don't know if you have seen that. It's Wh a, which one? Uh, the latest Sony. Uh, Sony, of, okay. Yeah. Okay. So th that's one that's that could be something to be used. I don't, I haven't used it myself, but we'll keep an eye on it. And and if it uh, if it works well, it's, it's it could be something to to try to solve. And, and but maybe wait wait a year and see that they still continue to to, to support that sensor. Right. And because we, it will have a high resolution also, similar resolution as the lidar sensor, but we don't know it anymore. Yeah, it, it's definitely true, as you you know, in the Android ecosystem, it's a bit more, well, a lot more fragmented, um, per se, and and that's a part of being Android. What what I'm curious to see, and I'm and I'm, I'm and I'd be curious to know if you you see that in your your data usage is that historically Android was always cheaper. Um, what we're finding is that when you start looking at the Android devices, phone or tablets, as soon as you bring in that precision GNSS chip or a time of flight LIDAR or something, you you start being pretty yeah. much equal to the Apple ecosystem in terms of cost. So that Android is cheap actually no longer uh, applies. So I'm curious when you're thinking about your current customer base, is it, a, is it pretty much you know 80%, 90% Apple users as a function of the products and, and their availability or, or, or do you actually see them pretty balanced in terms of Apple versus or, or iOS versus Android. I mean, it's, it's, it's one part of this that we have this height meter both for Android and, and iOS to is to test that to see how, how is the how is the usage and so on. We we have like twice as much users on iOS, uh, and 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 then we have also like three four times more paying users. So it's like it's both that you have more numbers and so on. But we must also admit that the iOS version is more, it's, it's, uh, it gives you more um, features. It got, you could measure the crown with the crown height, you save the GPS coordinates and you could export the data and you could, yeah, it's a lot, lot more fancy. So it's yeah. not, it's not, um, yeah, not an equal. Okay, so, so really when you say crown height, because a couple of things there I'm curious on poking at a little bit so we can measure height to, to live crown or really height component, but you mentioned uh, the position of the tree. So are you saying we could uh, create a stem map of the trees with the iPhone based yeah. on the area? Yep, cool. Yeah, and that's that's something that that's uh, something is that will be really interesting in the future. This fusion about this local coordinate system that you get get from lidar and AR with this global positioning system, and you can see that in in some cities you have this fusion that they you could go out in in some cities and 
you pick up the phone and you get the GPS coordinates and it, then it's know how to search for this local coordinate system. It's not so for a forest really yet, but sometimes in the future, maybe we could, because the, this local coordinate system is really pre precise if you compare it to the GPS. So that's something that I think will be great for the future just for comparing maybe aerial data when you go up with LiDAR. And then we could have data from the ground with arboreal collecting diameter and damages and species and so on. And then fusion and fusion that together. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you, you nailed it on the head that from a local reference system, it's going to be tight, right? The relative accuracy in your your uh, AR space is going to be tight. And, and largely, I think you solve that by just tying it back to a known control point, right? So as long as you've got that control point nailed down at a very high level of accuracy and precision using tools we have today on the GNSS side, I think you get the best of the, the both worlds. Now you mentioned costs. So again, we know foresters, foresters are, you know, straight to the point, like, all right, Johan, how much is it going to cost me? Can I afford it? So you brought up costs. Why don't you educate our listeners? Because I'm, I'm sure some are giggling while they're listening to this going like, when was he going to ask? It's like, come on, give me the, the real <laughs> yeah. answers. But what, what's the cost of this app? Yeah, we, for the we talk of arboreal forest where they measure the the the, the diameter and so on. It's 25, 25 US dollars per month, okay. I think it is in in US, uh, something like that. And you could all yeah, that's the price. And the the height meter is uh, you pay once, and and then you get it forever. So it's a uh, it's a very it's very competitive price. And what are you charging for the one time price? Are you able well, to for, share? Yeah, for it's it's dependent on different countries, but we could say for for like for the Android, I think it's eight bucks for 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 the height meter, and eight, for eight bucks a year, yeah, or, or total forever. for total, so it's really cheap. <laughs> but but for the uh, the live the iOS version, it's twenty five bucks uh, total, and you could always buy, buy it for one year. So. Okay, so, uh, so when we release this podcast, Johan, yeah. uh, I want you to start your data analytics tracking yeah. on your store. <laughs> and, and I want to see if there's a correlation with Android 8 bucks, yeah. Apple 25 bucks, and see if you have a surge on the, the day of release. That's competitive pricing, yeah. 8 bucks on Android, like for forever? Like, yeah. It is to be a little bit cheap, but uh, it, it's nice that it will be used also. And uh, we also have a little bit of bad conscience that we don't have it, haven't given, given the Android version as much love as it uh, should have. Right, right. Well, what better way to, to, to you know validate product market fit and get some feedback from the users uh, from, from that point of view? Okay, so uh, we, we've talked about the Arbor your two products right now. Um, you're based out of Sweden. Uh, we've heard the two apps, the Arboreal Forest and Arboreal Tree Height, are available as uh, Apple iOS apps. Uh, and we've heard that only the Arboreal Tree Height is available on the Android ecosystem, but there's more plans coming through going forward. What, what else is on the Arboreal company roadmap? New products, new features? What, what's Johan focusing on in the next uh, year, year to three year time frame? Uh, we have some, but we have not nothing official yet. But uh, some things that will come is just, I mean, you have a lot of we we want we are collecting more and more data from the field. That's the the thing that will happen the closest uh, month. That uh, I mean, for example, it will be possible to just not measure one height. But now you measure the mean tree, but some users want to have more data. They want to measure the thin tree, the height of thin tree, and the uh, large tree and so on, uh, and there will be we have something with, with this uh, global position, the fusion of this global positioning and the local coordinate system. That's something we're working on in the closest time, and we have one new product on the way, but it may take a half a year or two more <laughs> before we have something to say about that. But it's, uh, it's it feels like we're living in a in a very ex uh, uh, very thrilling time to, to much technology and much possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm sensing like Arboreal is probably, you know, not a hundred person software development shop. I suspect, you know, the guy I'm speaking to now is doing some of the development and uh, you're wearing multiple hats, so you can only go so fast yeah. uh, and uh, as you possibly can. So, so I'm going to pivot us a little bit because 
um, and jump in and pivot us. We've talked with the products. We'll come back at, at the end. Uh, so definitely for our listeners, if you're curious at the end of the podcast, uh, Johan will share how to get a hold of him and the website, how you can download. But I'm curious to, to shift our discussion maybe to broader tech trends. Obviously, you know, with uh, your products, your boots on the ground in the truest sense, uh, measuring individual trees. But but thinking of, uh, and I know you've posted this on social, the Boston Dynamic spot dog or the the Huawei, I call it the badass dog because it's black. It looks like the Terminator. Oh, you got one there. You got, oh, there you go. <laughs> I have the, the small one here, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it's this uh, pet toy. It's That's also, awesome. Uh, yeah, it's a small Boston Dynamics, so, uh, but it's uh, still just for fun. But it's who knows what will what what it, it will bring or what you could learn from this uh, ground based uh, robotics. Yeah, absolutely. Because we're we're seeing the MSN folks with their hover map getting mounted on on you know from mining the other spaces. We've also seen uh, uh, Hexagon um, uh, make an announcement with their BLK. Uh, product line mounting, I, I believe, on uh, some of the the dogs, the Boston Dynamics dogs. But what's what's your view on it? Do you, do you think this is like a cool thing? I got a a dog with no head that's yellow, and we're going to call it Spot, running around, or the Terminator version of Huawei black, mean looking thing. Maybe it's a guard dog. I don't know. But but what are your what are your thoughts? Do you think this is coming? We're going to see Foresters, you know, unleashing their uh, pet digital dogs out there to do this work, or or maybe they'll have the Arboreal app installed and then just looking around well, share 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 your thoughts on what what that this space is looking like with the dogs and even the uavs as well because they're they're everywhere now right what what, what are you seeing in sweden and what are your thoughts in general around the world when i got this it, it feels a little bit like when i got my first uav it was like uh, very thrilling and, and exciting but also very hard to, to get it working correctly because it's 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 not easy to 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 walk uh, and to walk on uneven ground. That's tricky. I mean, we will see the first uh, robotics dogs when you have like a flat floor. <laughs> that will be easiest one. Uh, but I mean, it's just a matter of time. Then, but maybe not now. It's, uh, it will take some more time. And I saw a comparison about this. Is this energy that it takes for for uh, someone to walk on the ground and to fly with a UAV? And uh, I think it's easier to fly than walk in a forest today, even though it's hard to fly in with a lot, lot of branches. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I hear you on that one. I think every geography is unique. Forestry is very complex anywhere you go in the uh, world and some are easy uh, I, I remember being in South Africa they're showing me their uh, eucalyptus plantations and it was flat as flat can be yeah. with nothing and I'm like damn the dog can run there right yeah and I yeah, think of our Canadian boreal forest I'm like no it's like <laughs> well, well I don't know maybe yeah. but I, I would want to see the tests and definitely I'd bring my uh, my cooler full of cold drinks and a, a lawn chair to watch this thing uh, unfold though but so so thinking of technology you're obviously um, immersed in this um, thinking of one year three year ten year time frame what what's getting you excited like I know the iPhone 13 I think t- tomorrow right I think Apple yeah, is making some be. announcements yeah. um, but one three ten you know in the context of arboreal and then the context of a generic digital forester what what are you excited about <sighs> One thing is that, like, is that to, to bring the, the, the office to the forest instead of having taken the... Now, the last 20 years, it feels like we have taken the, the forest to the office. We're sitting behind the great, great remote screens and we like to sit like we are doing right now. But I thought, think about greater connections. And I mean, the CPU in, in the phones right now is better than they are in the, in the normal laptops. Why not? making it possible to take these decisions in the forest and have all the data accessible everywhere. Not, you're not dependent on being in an office. That's something that gets me really excited. And I think that AR could be a way of, of solving a lot of problems when you want to interact with the reality and the virtual reality and the back end and the servers on where they ever are. So that makes me really excited. And for Arboreal, it's like, I mean, we have, we will see that the, the hardware will be better and better on the phones. And we will try to catch up with the latest and, and try to use it in the best way. 
because we are standing on the head of some giants. Uh, the, the tech giants, they, they give us great APIs and great hardware and great software we could, that we could use. And I see many possibilities for the forestry to use a lot more things like that. But then on the, I mean, on the three years, I think we will have a change of this. Then we, I think we'll have walked from using flat phone screens and use some sort of glass, uh, the first generation for real. Uh, but then I don't know. I mean, 10 years are very long time in the, in the tech space. Who, who could say like 10 years ago, we got the iPad, like something like that. It was, yeah, that's really remarkable. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I still have uh, my the very first iPad uh, version one Gen one in my drawer. I remember I bought it uh, when we had our first uh, kid and we put it in a rugged case. I, I, I still have it in my filing cabinet. It is heavy. It is like a, a, a like a brick. And I, and I don't want to throw it out because I want to keep it as a Gen 1 because it's pristine in the rugged yeah. case. And one day I want to break it out and say, it's like, oh, you know, kids, <laughs> this is what we used to, or, or show it in a class, right? And the kids yeah. will be like, what is that? Like an I what? Like, seriously, yeah. that's what you guys were using? So who knows what 10 years is, is yeah. going to, to look like. I'm curious to pick your brain. I know I've chatted with uh, Enda Keen from Tree, Tree Metrics. I know you guys have partnered. Can Tell us more about that partnership, how you met and what it means to, to partner in general in forestry to realize success. Yeah, I mean, we are a small company. We are, we are like, uh, oh, it's we are two, two, three people that are working on this, uh, these things. And we don't have the abilities to, to be a worldwide company and serve every need that the forester have. So I think partnership is really important. We want to focus on great tool on the devices in the field and then get data to the user and the user maybe need more analytics like tape equations for this species or mapping capabilities and th then we saw that this three metrics had a, a pr great product that could be used in in conjunction with, with our data collection and i think that's the way to go forward instead of we trying to make everything you yeah, try to focus on making just the app the best possible and collect data with that. And then the user could either build something for themselves, or in this case, that uh, Trimetrics give the possibilities for a user to, to using mapping cap capabilities or uh, tape equations and, and cost uh, analysis and so on. Right. So I think, I think that's the way for us to go. Is, uh, don't spread too thin. You can't do everything. Yep, yep. Being there focuses in focus is important absolutely while well, we want to help everybody and anybody uh there's limited time there's limited resource and limited dollars at the uh at the end of the day and and agree with you wholeheartedly so so what i'm hearing is really arborio is focusing on the data collection um whether it's a tree metric solution so i, I interviewed and uh maybe two two pods ago for the listeners who, who who want to go back and listen to that conversation uh but really it sounded like anything could be used, right? You're focusing on the data cloud, whether someone's using an Esri product, open source, uh, you know, a Microsoft Power BI product, it, it really doesn't matter. You're just focusing on yeah. good, accurate, precise tree measurements or field measurements um, for that that matter. So so thinking of a forester who who's like, you know what, this is great. I'm still old school calipers, vertex exometer, whatnot, um, and I want to try this out. What are, are there challenges that they might face in getting this operational? And if so, what are your pro tips on how to make that transition easy? Is there training or is there self-help guides? Or is it literally as easy as downloading a, a new song on your iPhone and you just click, click, click and, and off you go? I think it's, I mean, it's, you have done some tutorial videos uh, how to use it that you could take a look at them at first because it's uh, yeah, videos are a great way to learn i mean i learned a lot by looking at youtube and we try to do the same thing that publish uh, some tutorials there and then it's try trial and error we, we try to make it as easy as possible and if you have some uh, some questions it's just to give us a mail or call us and we'll try to to make it even easier it is it's a hard thing to, to, to try to change your way of work. That's the real challenge. If you're used to using 
manual calipers for 30 years and to change that could be a real problem but the great thing with our product is that we are mimicking a traditional way we're mimicking a way if you're used to doing sample plots with circular or transect it's like okay i recognize all steps so in that case you have a advantage that you have used traditional tools yeah, absolutely. So, so one of my last questions, maybe more at a broader macro scale, I'm curious to know your, your thoughts is uh, recently in the news, you know, Apple, it seems like the fangs are always in the news for some reason, whether cybersecurity or privacy or app store and payment. But uh, Apple has recently been in the store uh, or in the spotlight. Um, I believe one, at some point they reduced uh, a lot of the people I know who do mobile development, they call it the Apple tax or the Google tax on store things sold through the store and, and they lowered it. Um, but recently, I believe there's a decision made around making the stores more open for other payment types, but basically opening up these yeah. historically closed stores. What are your thoughts on that? How does that benefit you? Or is this really noise? Whereas, you know, a, a developer, you're like, yeah, whatever. Obviously, lower fees you have to pay to list your app in the stores. It means more money in your in, in your pocket. But do you have any thoughts on this, or or really is it? Yeah, you know, it is what it is. We'll we'll go with it. Yeah, it, I, it was a judgment this Friday, uh, but between Epic and and Apple, and it's and and the judgment was like both of you are wrong. <laughs> so it was like really, and it's. Yeah, it's really hard to know what will happen by that because one thing was that Apple was so so maybe be, give it, give us some background, yeah. Johan. Give us some background on the Epic Apple thing. Uh, or it could be a long, long podcast if we do this, <laughs> but the Epic, the, the makers of this Fortnite uh, game, they, they wanted to to be able to sell uh, their products without paying Apple thirty percent of, of of each transaction, and then then they did that, and they were or forced out of from the Apple Store, and uh, then the the whole uh, yeah, the, the the big trial between Epic and Apple, and it's uh, been really interesting to follow because you don't know what what will happen from that uh, because it's 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 COVID. It's, in one way, Apple says that we give you this API and this this tooling, and you you give it for free, and you take this cut on the transaction. Uh, how if you're not paying Apple their percent, will how will you then be able to use the tooling? And that's that we don't know. Uh, I mean, it, it's not beneficial for Apple to maybe start. I mean, it's they earn the most money for from the big companies, not from the small ones. So it could be very expensive for the small ones to to pay pay such co costs. So, but we don't know. We'll see in the near future. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm always curious here because you're you're obviously on the the European side or the Scandinavian side. Like every geography is different in their views on on privacy and security and, and requirements. Truthfully, so I was just curious to see as a as a developer how um, how what your views were on that. So, so hey, Johan, thanks so much for joining the podcast. Thanks for sharing with us the uh, arboreal story. Very, very cool. Hats off to you, you know, as an entrepreneur to an entrepreneur. I know it's, uh, as I said, there's the highs, there's those lows, there's the roller coasters. There's some, sometimes the head scratchers of like, do I really, really want to do this? But hey, for some of us, this is the fun. It's the uncertainty that gets us excited, uh, you know, and, and continually learning about that. But thinking of Arboreal, thanks so much for joining. If people want to get a hold of you, uh, what's the best way? Website, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, email, you fire away. Yeah, mainly on LinkedIn, uh, Johan Ekenstedt at uh, LinkedIn. But you could also send me an email at johan at arboreal.se. You could right. search, visit our website, arboreal.se. Arboreal.se, absolutely. We'll, we'll put those in the show notes too to make sure people have way, uh, ways to find uh, out. So, uh, Johan, so, uh, uh, Johan, I just realized when you said your name, I'm like, I've been saying it wrong the whole time. But uh, as I said, sweet, Swedish language for me is just a, a hard one per se. But hey, thanks so much for, for joining. I, I wish you all the best with 
the continued uh, sale of Arboreal Forest and Tree Height. As I said, I want you to reset that ticker when we release this pod and uh, and see if we, we've got a big spike there on purchases <laughs> and, and whatnot. But hey, thanks so much for joining, sharing your thoughts. Really appreciate it. Wishing you the best uh, with the end of summer, early fall, and and be safe with these uh, COVID-19 days. But definitely thanks for your time. Much appreciated. Uh, thanks, Kim, for putting up these shows. I really appreciate them. No problem. Anytime. All right. Thanks, Johan.